Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Community Health Day. That is the day every month where we partner up with Valley Health and talk with physicians, administrators, nurses, mental health professionals. Last month, we talked with Aubrey Preche, Director of Telemedicine, and got some insight into the telemedicine program at Valley Health and where it's going and how it's growing. If you missed that, again, you can always go to the valleytodaypodcast.com and have a listen. Valley Health has their own category. So you can just go to the categories Choose Valley Health, Community Health, and see it all. I'm super pumped today to be talking about the robots. Anyone who listens to the show on a regular basis knows that I try to figure out a way to work the robots into a conversation with every Valley Health <laughs> professional that I talk to. So today is, is going to be all about the robots. Dr. Devin Flaherty is here with us. He is Director of Surgical Oncology for Valley Health. Dr. Jorge Posadas is with us as well. He is a general surgeon with Valley Health Surgical Partners. And you guys got to have the coolest jobs ever. Do you ever feel like you're superheroes when you go into <laughs> the operating room? I don't know so much about superheroes. We're kind of walking around with pajamas on all day. <laughs> but we do get to do some really neat high-tech operations and really advanced care for the Valley. And uh, yeah, it's truly a privilege. How do you prep for something like that? Because I can't imagine using robots was something that was a class you took in medical school. Yeah, no, I mean, robotics has been evolving, I'd say, at least 20, 25 years. Dr. Posadas and myself have both been in training as well as in the first half of our career during the evolution of robotic surgery. So we've seen it in its infancy and uh, we've seen where it's gone to date and it's been a, a really neat experience overall in our training as well as just learning the skill sets to be able to provide the care needed at a high level through robotic surgery. Dr. Posadas, it's a wide range of surgeries that can be performed because there are multiple types of robots that Valley Health has for multiple types of surgeries. Yes, definitely. We have different platforms and different companies producing these machines that are extremely precise and really advanced. So the one that we usually use is the Da Vinci robot platform. That's the one that we use for general surgery and the other uh, surgeries that we do at the Winchester Medical Center. But there are other platforms like we can use to visualize the lungs and do some procedures that way and also for orthopedic procedures. What is the benefit? Obviously, I would assume it's much more precise, which has to be helpful, but how's that, how does that translate to patient care? It is, so the, the robotic surgery that we talk about is based on the laparoscopic concepts, and that's something that most people are familiar with. When we put small trocars in the abdomen or the chest, and then we pump some CO2 in the cavity to get room, and then with a camera, we can perform the surgery from the outside. That's something that we did in residency and it's been around for 30 years probably. So this is a, a step ahead of that same concept. We have this, the same trocars are very similar, but we have a more precise machine that give us a lot of articulation, more precision, also better visualization with a 3D view when, when we are sitting at the console you, you doing the, the procedure. Is it more difficult to see something in 3D? I've had conversations with Dr. Shabeshi in the past about how he uses them on hip replacements, knee replacements. I have trouble with a backup camera in my car, so I can't even imagine how seeing something in 3D, is that something you have to learn how to do or is it a special talent? No, it's actually, and forgive the pun intuitive, because that's the company that produces Da Vinci, but it is very just, seamless when you put your head in the viewfinder. It's as if you're sitting in a room looking at somebody and you can see depth and it helps you with precision and movements and small areas. And the whole tenant and goal of surgery, um, surgery is trauma. And whenever we enter the body to do anything surgically, we need to minimize that trauma so the patient has a better and quicker recovery. And robotics, is a platform that affords surgeons the ability to minimize trauma while we're operating. Which then also leads to a much quicker recovery time, I would assume. Exactly. Not only a faster recovery, but we have been finding other benefits. I think people have less pain compared to other surgeries. And I think uh, there's faster recovery to go back to work, probably less blood loss during the surgery, shorter length of stay at the hospital. So the benefit is not only for the time of the surgery, but probably in the long term. 
And we touched on this a second ago. There are multiple robots that Valley Health has. How many are there spread across the Valley Health system? Are they all here at Winchester Medical Center where we're talking today? Currently, today, we have three Da Vinci XI robots at Winchester Medical Center. The evolution has been we had one back in 2016 and we broadened our practice over the last three years, I would say, we got two more XIs and the system has risen and seen the need for more, risen to that challenge in the surgeons. Right now, I believe we have 19 that are credentialed to do robotics here and that list is growing. It's certainly a modality that's not going away and Valley Health has embraced it and we are now going to be receiving two more, so a grand total of five within the next month or two. And these are mostly used in the operating room. I was telling you guys earlier that I got in the demo from Dr. Shabeshi of the one that he does for orthopedics, which I know is still done in an operating room as well, but these are up a notch even more so. Yes, they're always in the operating room. And like Dr. Friday was saying, the evolution has been not only the number of surgeons, but also the specialties that are now being involved in robotic surgery. At the beginning was all in the surgical oncology and gynecology and a little bit later was thoracic surgery, but now we have general surgery. We also have trauma surgery or what is called acute care surgery service. So the, the number of specialties is really expanding. How does a doctor get trained if it's someone who's already on staff here at the hospital that hasn't had any real prior experience? I assume you guys are making sure that they know how to operate these, the company that provides the robot. How does that work? Like with any surgical platform or new technique, you have to get credentialed through Valley Health to do this. So when a surgeon arrives, if they haven't been trained, the company Intuitive does help with arranging a training session and then proctoring where surgeon, the surgeon is watched by an outside surgeon to make sure they're safe. Once that's done, then they're credentialed and then can begin operating in their specialty. As you can imagine, because of the technology, there's a lot of simulation that is possible that was not present before. So when we train in residency, you have to see somebody do it and then do it with your mentor. But now you can just sit at the console and without having a patient in the room, just run through exercises that the platform has for you before you actually start doing surgery. It seems like it is such a cleaner, more sleeker way of doing surgery and providing health care. But at the same time, I would be terrified. I can't play a video game. So I would be terrified of trying to make sure that what I envision in my head that's supposed to be happening is what the robot is actually doing. Do you guys ever get nervous? Not nervous, but that's actually a question that we get a lot from patients asking, is a, a robot doing the surgery? And it's not really a robot doing the surgery, right? It's us using the robotic arms and the robotic technology to perform the surgery ourselves. That's a question that we get all the time, but... I think we sure. watch way too many medical shows on television. I think <laughs> shows like ER and Chicago Med and all of these shows, Grey's Anatomy, have ruined us patients for all of you doctors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exactly what Dr. Posadas is saying. This is not artificial intelligence. This is us. Every movement we make, the robot makes. There's no autonomy on the robot side of things. When did you get your first robot? 2016. And so here we're sitting in 2023 and you recently had your 5,000th robotic surgery. Is that behind schedule, ahead of schedule? Does it depend on how many of them you have and the variety of surgeries that you're able to perform? I, I don't know that I can even answer that. I know the system has seen exponential growth. As Dr. Passas alluded to, when it first started back in 2016, it was a handful of us doing it and they dedicated to oncologic surgery. Since then it's broadened greatly and somebody like Dr. Posadas, he can do four or five cases in a day on the robot. As a general surgeon myself, as an oncologist, I can do probably most one to two. So the number of cases and the versus the hours on the robot is, is a little different. They're always humming, they're always working. <laughs> But certainly as more surgeons, more and more are doing it and more and more are doing the fastest growing areas are hernia repair, acute care surgery. And those are where the surgeons are beginning to buy in and we're seeing more and more people become credentialed.
I can't say we're ahead of schedule because we didn't have a schedule, <laughs> but I can tell you these are way more cases that I, I imagined at the time. So in 2016, we were doing around 160 cases per year. Now this year, we're, I think we're going to be over 1,600 cases just in 2023. And that's crazy, especially when you consider that's with ma the majority of the year without the two, two new ones that you're about to get in the next few weeks. Yes, definitely. So we're going to be doing probably 2,000 cases by next year is my guess, if not more. And are they available to any physician that's trained on them to use for any reason? If there is some crazy 2 a.m. emergency something or another, are they available at all hours of the day and night? Yes, and actually being able to achieve that as a system is a sign of a more mature robotics program. When we first started, emergency robotics, urgent care robotics was not something we did, but now that's, as I mentioned, one of the faster growing areas in robotic surgery is acute care surgery. You come in with an appendicitis, you might get a robotic appendectomy now in the middle of the night because the program has evolved to a point where all of the support staff, nurses, surgeons themselves, anesthesiologists, everybody knows how to do it. Can It's just a part of care. It's not something that's new and novel anymore. It's a tool that everybody knows how to use Correct. for whatever situation they're in. Correct. It's, it's fully integrated into our system every day at every level of care. I can't imagine what it must have been like in 2016 when some of you guys knew how to do it and knew what to do with it. I went in there. No, I went in there. Did you guys have to have your names on waiting lists and scheduling and things like that? Well, actually, it was interesting because I was one of the four surgeons in 2016 and we had one robot and there was zero waiting list. <laughs> it got really interesting when there was about 10 of us in one robot and that's when the system decided to broaden its robotic capacity and bought a couple more exercises. You had to learn to share in a hurry. <laughs> and that was part of the maturation process because with that became a deep dive into how we organize our entire operative schedule, which has been a huge revamp for the system in the last year in order to open up access of care to the robots and the surgeons to be able to use them for the patients because we're seeing great outcomes and we want to afford this to any surgeon that wants to use it at any time for any patient. I think that's something that sometimes we on the other side as residents and as patients forget is that this is still a business. It's a nonprofit, but it is in, you are in the business of healthcare and you can't just go out and buy the coolest, newest things. Like when something, new microphones come out, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna not have Starbucks for the next two months so I can go buy this new microphone. That's not how things work from the business end here. So you really do have to get it, see what kind of use you're gonna be able to give it. And then does it have that potential for growth to be able to expand and do more things with it? I agree, but I have to recognize the view that Valley Health had when we were asking about more robots and that this is what the community was asking for, and not only for the patients, but also for the surgeons and the medical staff. We had a little bit of resistance at the beginning. It was a new technology, like you said. People were not familiar with it, and we didn't have any hospitals around it with the same technology but they recognize that this is where the future is and providing these new machines for, for us to work with is, is, is really a great deal. I wanna go to break, but before we do, I have a, another really weird question. Do they have names? I know it's the Da Vinci XI, but have you given them actual names, like people name their cars and their pets? Do these robots have names? Yeah, so the first robot that we had was named Chester for Winchester. So that was the first name, and I don't know if we have names for the other ones, unfortunately. But we can come up with some. Yeah. I think that would be a really cool contest. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dr. Shabeshi has a name for his, but I can't remember what, I wanna say it was Max, but that may not be right. I'll, I'll have to go back and listen to that show again, because he tells me that in the show. Let's take a break, when we come back, let's talk more about the robots and the technology. We are recording in advance as we always do, but we're sitting at Winchester Medical Center in the atrium boardroom. Dr. Devin Flaherty is here with me. He is Director of Surgical Oncology for Valley Health. Dr. Jorge Posadas is here as well. He is a general surgeon with Valley Health Surgical Partners. We're talking about the robots today, and we're gonna come back and do more of that in just a couple of minutes. Hey sisters, you know who it is. I'm Omar, a senior at Mountain Vista Governor's School. Together with environmental nonprofit Sustainability Matters, we're rebranding recycling. 
Keep it clean, honey. Your bottles and cans don't have to be spotless, but they should never have chunks of food still attached. Pizza boxes with bits of cheese or lots of grease can't be recycled either, though you can compost greasy boxes at your lovely home. For more on how we're rebranding recycling, look for hashtag rebranding recycling on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, or visit sustainabilitymatters.earth. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Community Health Partnership Day with Valley Health. I'm sitting at Winchester Medical Center recording my conversation today with Dr. Devin Flaherty. He is Director of Surgical Oncology for Valley Health. Dr. Jorge Posadas is here with us as well. He is a general surgeon with Valley Health Surgical Partners. We're talking about the Da Vinci Robot, which in and of itself has a really cool name. I know we joked before we went to break about the names of the actual robots, but who wouldn't want a robot that originally comes named Da Vinci. I mean, that in and of itself seems really, really cool. Dr. Posadas, I want to come back to you because we were talking a little bit in the first segment about some of the different types of surgeries that can be performed using these robots. And it is a pretty long list. You as a general surgeon, I would guess, probably use it more often than some of your other specialties in and around Valley Health System. I do, yes. Um, not only me, but also my partners use it all the time. And that's because we operate on a lot of hernias, for example, that is a really good platform to perform those in a minimal invasive way. Uh, we also do gallbladder surgery that way, and we do complex hernias in the abdominal wall. We also do uh, parasophageal hernias and hydro hernias uh, surgery for reflux, and we're also performing some colon surgery as well. But it's not only general surgery, we have all other services that are doing the robotic surgery all the time, like bariatric surgery, surgery for weight loss, that's pretty much this, the only platform that they're using for their procedures. Oh, wow. Yes, and uh, as part of general surgery, we also do acute care surgery all the time, emergency surgeries that come through the, through the ER, and we're also doing those in a minimal invasive way using the Da Vinci platform. Appendicitis, acute gallbladder surgery, perforated ulcers, surgery for obstruction, bowel obstruction, that people come in from adhesions or other problems. And we talked in the first segment, too, about how the ability to use this robot really cuts down on their care, their recovery time. It cuts down on the potential for infections, any of those kinds of things. Are there situations where you've been able to do a surgery because you had the robot that maybe you wouldn't have done otherwise? Definitely. Some surgeries that are more complex, we were not able to do them laparoscopically in, in many cases. And if we did, they were really cumbersome and difficult to perform. But because the Da Vinci instruments give you so much freedom inside the abdominal cavity, for example, it's, there are things that we would not do laparoscopically alone. One of the perfect examples is suturing inside the abdominal cavity. So that's really, really difficult to do laparoscopically. It's not impossible, but it's difficult. But with the new instruments that we have, the Da Vinci, that's a lot easier. Or it's, I mean, it takes some time to train, <laughs> but eventually you can master it. And it really is probably one of those things where you could probably not go back. Now, I mean, it's not that you've lost your skills in being able to do what you did pre-robot era, but it would I would imagine it would be very difficult was, to now turn back time. It's kind of difficult to go back, and we have to do it sometimes when the robot is not available because somebody else is using it, and then we have to do it laparoscopically. It, it, it's not as fun. Right? <laughs> do you foresee, Dr. Flaherty, a time where it's just the norm that every surgery uses a robot in some form? Yes, with the caveat. As a surgeon, you want to try to perform all surgeries in as minimally invasive a fashion as you can. However, there are certain circumstances, especially in oncology, where you can't do that. And you have to do, as I like to say, the old-fashioned way where you make the big incision with the knife and do it with your hands. But I do feel there's certainly a paradigm shift in terms of minimally invasive surgery in terms of our platform, and that's robotics. From a specialty perspective, Dr. Posadas talked about some of the general surgery type of things that can be done with the robots. There's a ton of specialty surgeries that can be used using the Da Vinci as well. Yes, uh, at Valley Health, I know, you know Dr. Posadas touched on general surgery, acute care surgery, bariatrics. From the oncologic standpoint, there's been a lot of general surgical oncology performed 
urologic oncology has also performed that way. And then we have colorectal surgery, which we do both benign and malignant diseases. And dovetailing with that is also gynecologic procedures, for instance, pelvic floor disorders, things like this. For my own practice, we've started in the colorectal arena. That's the most common area to begin. It's just a, an organ that has, a, unfortunately, a high incidence of cancer, so we see a lot of that. But we were able to really hone our skills in, on, on colorectal surgery and then from there advance to other organs in the abdomen. And there's very few, if any, organs we haven't touched robotically at this point, and those are inclusive of esophageal, stomach, hepatobiliar, that's liver, bile duct, pancreas, we do robotic whipples, robotic distal pancreatectomies, small and large intestine, adrenal glands, and pretty much everything in between. So it's advanced our skill sets and our ability to perform surgeries in all of these organs safely, and it really affects the long-term outcomes as well as oncologic outcomes. Because for cancer surgery, you have to not only remove the tumor, but also regionally remove lymph nodes in order to control the disease regionally. And this platform allows you to be very accurate and precise in how you do that. Do you find that patients know more about these, that they've seen things on television, they've seen ads, things along those lines, and they're more educated themselves when they come to you and they're asking, is this a procedure that you'll do using robotics? Definitely. I mean, more patients are coming to our offices asking what kind of procedures we do and what technology we have access to. And yeah, they ask for robotic surgery directly in many cases. And the flip side of that has got to be when you're trying to recruit doctors, because those of us on the outside that want the best care possible for ourselves want to make sure that we have physicians that are being recruited here and that those requirements or those standards are here for them to come here and practice as well. Janet, that day is here where we probably won't be able to successfully recruit surgeons uh, without having a robotic platform, at least at a higher level hospital like the Winchester Medical Center, because they are getting the training and residency now. They want to have that available to them when they begin to practice surgeons. And I hope we have, we'll have five, so it's going to make our recruitment all the more better. The two new ones that you're getting, will they go into the general pool of robots that are used for everybody for all of the things that you're using them for now, or will they have their own specialty of sorts? No, we don't have any assigned robots to any particular service. Um, all, of, all, all surgeons will have access to them. When we went to break, we were talking about your 5,000th robotic surgery. That 5,000 doesn't include the ortho surgeries, all of the ion surgeries. These are actual surgeries, not hip replacements and knee replacements. So this is a really big deal to hit 5,000. Yeah, we're very proud of it. I mean, the 5,000 Da Vinci robotics cases that we've been able to achieve and as Dr. Passados alluded to, it's been an ex exponential growth and the future's bright. It's just going to continue to grow. So then I can put you down for the 10,000th surgery. You can come do another radio show <laughs> when you hit 10,000. I think the 10,000 case will be here very soon. In a couple of years, I guess. Wow. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. It's really cool for me as somebody who was born and raised here and literally was born in the old hospital. <laughs> That's how old I am. To be able to sit and have the opportunity to speak with all the different physicians that I do here through Valley Health, but in particular having this conversation with you guys and being able to see how far things have come in the healthcare field. You have access and so much more abilities now than what you would have 20, 30 years ago. Yes, totally. It's been a privilege to see this program grow this fast and this well run. It's not only the surgeons, you, have, you need the entire team to be on board. You need the anesthesia team, you need all the scrub techs, the nurses, and the entire hospital behind you so you can have a program this successful. Well, thank you both for taking some time this evening to chat with me. This has been a fascinating conversation. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. I will be back tomorrow. It is a brand new episode of The Valley Today, as it is every day, a few minutes afternoon, so meet me here then.